Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! In recent weeks, we've been debating some of the big issues at the heart of the European question. We've covered immigration and the economy. Today, we're going to look at Britain's sovereignty within the European Union and ask, is the EU the democratic club that we want to belong to? There are about 500 million people across the 28 member states of the European Union. Voters from these countries go to the polls every five years to elect 751 members of the European Parliament. The UK currently has 73 MEPs who have some say over the EU budget and new legislation. But it's the unelected commission led by President Jean-Claude Juncker that is responsible for day-to-day -day management plus proposing and implementing new laws. Later this month, David Cameron will attend a crucial meeting of the European Council to press for his draft settlement, the outcome of his efforts to renegotiate our terms of EU membership. The Council is made up of the 28 heads of state or government of EU members and decides the Union's overall political direction. But it's not to be confused with the Council of the European Union, where ministers from each country meet to discuss, amend and adopt laws. There's always been concern about a so-called democratic deficit, and at the last elections in 2014, turnout across the EU was the lowest ever. In the UK, where few people can even name a local MEP, turnout was just under 36%. And I'm joined now by former Respect MP George Galloway. He said this week he'll campaign for Britain to leave the EU and by the Labour MP Stephen Kinnock, who wants us to remain in the EU. Stephen Kinnock, let me come to you first. Mm. Turnout at the last election was under 36%. Only 11% can name their MEP. It's pretty clear the EU has a massive democratic deficit and the Cameron settlement does nothing to address it, does it? I think on the democratic deficit, of course it would be good if more people voted in European elections, but let's not forget that there is another democratically elected institution in Brussels, and that's the Council of Ministers and the European Council. They are our ministers, our Prime Minister, directly elected by the British people, uh, going to Brussels to exert influence for Britain. So I think the democratic deficit sometimes gets tied up with the European Parliament, that's an element of it, but the Council is a major part as well. And then on the, on the renegotiation, I think the really important point here is that this referendum is not about David Cameron's renegotiation. This referendum is about the future of the United Kingdom as a trading nation, as a proud uh, nation in terms of a, a diplomatic a big player, uh, and where we are actually going uh, for the, in terms of the long-term future of the country. It's not about... Uh, the precise details of David Cameron's no, renegotiation. No, the settlement's uh, been important, at least Mr Cameron thinks it's important. George Galloway, you've said you believe in a union of the peoples of, of Europe, mm. but surely the only realistic way to achieve that is to work for a reformed EU. Anything else is just rhetoric. No, because I think it's in the bricks of the European Union. You rightly pointed to the risibility of the European Parliament, its credibility, its standing and so on, but you didn't add, actually, that the European Parliament itself, even if 80% of people were turning out to vote for it, has almost no power. The power lies in this Council of Ministers and in a bureaucracy, well entrenched, very lavishly funded, which has uh, a momentum of its own. I could answer your question in two words. Catherine Ashton. Never heard of her? No. Ever elected her? No. She was the European Foreign Minister dictating to other countries outside the world uh, with no democratic mandate of any kind. I think we have to be sort of more sensible about the way we talk about these things. I mean, there's a, there's a process of co-decision which is enshrined in the treaties of the European Union. Uh, the vast majority of the legislation that goes through has to be agreed by both the European Parliament and by the European Council on the basis of proposals from the European the Commission. Sometimes the majority of the Council, not necessarily all the Council. Yeah, I mean, politics so is the art of the possible. And uh, when you're part of uh, a, a system of pooled sovereignties, when we come together as nation states, because we believe our sovereignty is actually strengthened 
through cooperation. Of course, you have to make compromises. You don't win mm. absolutely 100% of everything that you go for. But actually, I believe that through cooperation, through pooling our sovereignties, well, our sovereignty is strengthened. But there's been a lot of talk by the Prime Minister of asserting the sovereignty of Parliament. It seems to be one of the carrots to attract Mr Boris Johnson to come on side. But the truth is, surely you have to accept that in many areas for the EU and the European Court of Justice as well, they are sovereign and Parliament has to recognise that sovereignty or we have to leave. I think that we have to also look at the likes of Google or the likes of the big uh, multinational companies. I mean, they, they don't recognise a com com concept of sovereignty. For people on the left, such as Georgia and myself, the key point with the European Union is it's a it's a transnational body that's regulating transnational business. Not very so this, well. If we, we, we've got to go back. It's regulating them very well. Well, but, it's uh, much better Uber than, than we could Google do it alone, George. And all these uh, other. No, I don't think so. I don't. The, 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 the they, bottom they, line is, and this used to be common on the left, uh, Mr. Kinnock Sr. and I shared uh, many platforms on this, as well as the late Mr. Ben, the late Mr. Foote. This was uh, a, a commonplace on the left that we don't want to be dictated to by other countries. We want our people to choose our government and thus our direction. And I'd rather take my chance with changing things in Britain than waiting for change in Bulgaria or in, or in Poland but, but or, you're or in Germany. But you're an internationalist, George Gallery. That inevitably involves some kind of pooling of sovereignty, doesn't it? Yes, uh, but it depends yeah. upon the basis. The whole basis of the European Union, as we always said from 1975 onwards, on the left, the, the European community, now the EU, is actually built on neoliberal economic principles which are ironclad and unchangeable, however people want to vote. Well, are you we, comfortable with the manner in which Greece's sovereignty was overturned by the European institutions and above all by dominant countries like Germany? Oh, the first point is we live in a highly globalised, interdependent world and the idea that, that the UK alone can exert influence and regulate the big multinationals on its own is, is absurd. The other uh, key point on Greece is, how would we help the people of Greece by leaving the EU? I mean, our principles are about solidarity, the key value on which the European Union what, is founded what was the is solidarity, solidarity that which that is the, the value EU, of the left. What, what was the solidarity that the European institution showed Greece? Well, I think that what we need is a Labour Prime Minister in Brussels arguing against the, politic, the politics of austerity. But, but uh, it would be nothing uh, to the do neoliberal... with the British Prime Minister. No. We're not part of the Eurozone. This was a Eurozone exactly. uh, argument. But George Galloway... No, no, but I we, mean, still, you, we can still exert our influence you're on You're obviously unhappy with what happened in Greece, but mm. what many would think is your natural allies on the European left, Syriza in Greece, mm. uh, Podemos in Spain, they all want to stay in the EU. Why, why are you right and your comrades wrong? Well, the people of Greece were crushed underfoot by this neoliberal consensus on which the EU and its main institutions are built. Portugal actually had an election and elected a majority of left-wing MPs and were told by the European Union the president of Portugal was told, you mustn't summon these people to your palace to allow them to form a government. This is unconscionable. It's not because I love the people of Greece, though I do, or the people of Spain. I don't want us to face the same fate as them. Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonald's economic policies, which I believe in and which are badly needed, are illegal under the European Union. If we were to intervene to save our steel industry, for example, we'd be acting out with the European Union's legal framework. We wouldn't okay. be allowed to do it. You've been closely involved in the steel industry. What do you say to that? Well, uh, the I, first point is I fail to see how our principles of solidarity and reaching out to our brothers and sisters in other parts of the European Union are helped by the idea that we suddenly leave. That, to me, seems to be going against what about the founding the value of the Labour Party, which is solidarity. The other, on, on steel, it's, this is a classic example of it's up to your member state government to play the game properly. Unfortunately, we have a government that's been asleep on the, at the wheel on steel for four or five years. Energy prices, uh, energy compensation package should have been put in place years ago. Government's done nothing about it. It was They're the last Labour government that put the energy prices up? Well, but the, the massive flooding of Chinese steel into the British market has only been happening over the but last four years. But that can only be done by Europe, not by Britain. Yeah, and well, it took them four years to get the state aid clearance because nobody was knocking on the door properly in Brussels. And because we're cosying up to Beijing, uh, you know, Cameron and Osborne seem to be putting 
the interests of our, our relationship with China way ahead of the interests of British industry. Well, We're allowing them to dump massive amounts of Chinese you, steel in the market. Another issue about which goes to sovereignty. The European Court of Justice is preventing us from deporting a Moroccan citizen, the daughter-in-law of Abu Hamza. Can, Abu Hamza himself convicted of 11 terrorist offences. She's done time too for a terrorist-related offence. But we still cannot deport her. That's a pretty serious intrusion of our sovereignty, isn't it? I don't know the details of that case, but what I do know is that we live in a very, very interdependent world. No, you've world. said that, and, but what, and if we, if what you people want to know is whether we can deport foreign citizens who have a terrorist criminal convictions. Well, we did manage to do it with Abu Hamza, and so there are ways of... Uh, you know, the, the European Union is a rules-based organisation, and it sets the rules of the game. It's up to the member states to play that game properly. Unfortunately, we have a government that has failed to build alliances, failed to build coalitions in Brussels, and that's one of the reasons that we have a difficult relationship with the EU now. When you look at this Leave side and the various factions, and the fact they seem to be spending more time knocking lumps out of each other, uh, does that make you happy that you've joined the right side? And have well, you decided uh, uh, which faction you're going to join? Well, I, as you know, I campaigned uh, against breaking up Britain. I campaigned for a no vote in the Scottish referendum. That didn't mean I was with the Tories, didn't mean I was with the Orange Order. So will you go alone if, uh, again? Will you uh, solo uh, again? This is a Lexit campaign, a left case that used to be a commonplace from the 1970s and still standing now for a democratic future for Britain. We decide how many immigrants we have, who we deport, uh, right. what our levels of taxation are and what our foreign policy should be. We'll leave it there. Thank you both. Thank you. I've been getting away with it all